Hello, 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 hello. I hope that you all are doing well. Welcome to Friday Fights for the Kings. And so I'm a little late, had some technical difficulties. I'm gonna tell you, this week has been a week, but we continue to fight, we continue to pray, we continue to believe what God has spoken over our lives for our kings, for our young kings, for our families, for our marriages. And we're just going to trust God and believe that everything that he does, he does it well and that he's working it for our good. And so um, normally I have music playing and because of, I'm going to tell y'all, you can tell when the enemy does not want something to go for it. Because he will wait to the day of or the morning of to try to wreak havoc. And that's why it's so important to get up and command your day. Get up and speak over your day. Get up and pray and spend time with the Lord. Commune with the Lord. Because um, praying for others is great. But I'm telling you, you have to really get in that place and begin to pray for yourself. And so I am thankful for what God is doing and what he continues to do in our lives and I'm trying to get this fixed. And so today, y'all know I usually um, sing or um, give a song. And so I want to make sure that I do what God um, purpose in my heart. So I was praying, I said, okay, God, I don't have any music. Something ain't working right. Uh, I don't have any music, but I am going to sing today. So y'all bear with me as I sing a little bit of this song. This used to be a favorite song of mine. And so I used to sing it when I first gave my life to the Lord. And it was such an encouragement. And so I want to encourage you today that no matter what you're doing, just don't complain. Give it to God. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord. Why so much pain? But y'all know what? He knows what's best for me. Even though my weary eyes, they can see. But I say thank you, Lord. I won't complain. For God. spirit to sing today since my music ain't working. He might be doing something different, but I'm going to be obedient. So I challenge you as we go before and pray for the kings 
Don't complain. You may see some things, hear some things, feel some things, experience some things, but know that God has your best interest at heart. Know that God is working things out for your good. Know that he won't never leave you. He never will forsake you. And understand that he, he knows the beginning and the end. Everything that God has for us, everything that God has set up for us, he knows exactly what it takes to um, do what needs to be done in order to complete a work in our lives. And so today we're praying over our kings, our young kings, as well as our older kings, for them to be strong and courageous. And so we know that this is a time and a season where we may be facing some things that are unfamiliar. But guess what? Our kings are facing unfamiliar things too. Hey, Giovanni. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I guess God pushing me out there to do more of that because I ain't been able to get my computers working for my music. But anyway, but um, we know that sometimes we're in from unfamiliar territories. We know that we're in situations and circumstances that may seem a little bit scary. But when I tell you, when God tells you to do something, hey, sis, and when God pushes you to do something, it doesn't matter. You know, one of my motives and my, um, my, my, my encouragement on here is each time I come on here and do this live, I can have one person, no person, 20 people, 30 people. I'm just here to do what God says to do. And so having that mindset is the same mindset I have as a help me. My husband may not respond to something I suggest. He may not do something I think is right. But as long as I do what God called me to do, I want to be in that place where I'm submissive. And I thank God for my spiritual mom, how she talked about just being sanctified. And so when you have a saint, when you're sanctified, you can speak Joshua 1 and 9 over your husband and know that you ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to, 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 to be manipulative. You don't have to come up with these little schemes because like mom was talking last night, we, we, we've been in that place. But I'm telling you, we have to get to a place. And as I was reading this and studying this, um, I began to think about how powerful the word of God is. And we just only, you may not know how to pray warfare prayers. You may not know how to intercede and go to the, the heavens like some of the people I know. But I'm telling you, if you pray the word of God, one of the things I did uh, with me and my husband was going through a really bad spot. I went online and I was just researching it before I even got in counseling. And I found prayers against divorce. And, and scriptures and inserting my husband's name in. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I ain't saying this happened for everybody, but I'm telling you, consistency breaks down strongholds. I will pray certain prayers every day at a certain time. And I'm going to tell you, normally for me, within three days, my husband be done shifted. And then God said, do you see what I'm doing in your life? Do you see why your mouth is a weapon that it can bring life and it can grow or it can bring death? So we have to be very careful what we say out of our mouths. So today we're going to be praying for our kings, Joshua 1 and 9. And I love and I encourage you to read this whole chapter because what the Lord began to impart in me and begin to show me is even though I'm in a new place in my season, my husband is in a new place in this season, we need the strength and the courage of God. So Joshua 1 and 9, and I'm going to start at 8. And then even in this whole chapter, God um, the spirit of the Lord was talking <coughs> and saying this to him more than one time. And it said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. God, we declare today that the book of the law of the Lord shall not depart out of our king's mouth. That thou shall meditate therein day and light. God, I declare our kings are meditating on the word day and night. Day and night. That's 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. We're declaring that today. And that they may observe to do all that is written therein. God, we declare that our kings are observing to do all that is in this book that is pleasing unto God. For then thou shalt make their way prosperous. And they shall have good success. <coughs> and then Joshua 1 and 9 says this. <coughs> Excuse me. Have not I commanded thee? God is, 
The Spirit of the Lord is asking a question. Be strong and good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. So what we're doing today, we're not only praying for our kings, for them to be strong and courageous, but we're declaring that they will have the mindset to know that no, what, no matter what they do and no matter what they say, if God has directed them, that the Lord is with the wherever they, they go. And, and, and this scripture is so important, Joshua 1 and 8 and 9, because it gives strategic directions, not just for the kings, but also for ourselves. That if we follow the word of the Lord, if we do what God is saying that we should do, this is what can happen. So I'm going to read this again. It gives strategy, line upon line. There is no missing it if you do it. So when people come to you or, or, or someone comes to you or come to our kings and, and, and we see things out of order or we see things that they may not be doing, may not always be right. We can look at the scripture, Joshua 1 and 8, and say this. This book of the law shall not depart out of our king's mouth. Their mouth shall always be full of the word of God. But they shall meditate on it day and night. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we have to ask God. God, well, hmm, maybe it's because my king ain't meditating on that. So let me call that forth. I declare, I decree that my king is meditating on the word day and night. Because it's a prerequisite for this next thing. And it said that they may observe to do all that is written therein. They cannot observe to do all that is written therein if they're not meditating on the word day and night. So we declare that over our kings today. We're, we're declaring that, that, that they have the heart of God, that they're strong and courageous, and how they get strong and courageous is meditating on the word, being in the book of the Lord, having godly counsel and wisdom. Because after they've done all that, then the verse says, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then they shall have good success. You cannot have good success, whether you're a king or help me, without doing these things. God's word is set up strategically to show us that when we obey what he says, when we follow the word of God, that we will, will walk into what he has put for us. So then, you know, sometimes you, you do these things, and sometimes they do these things, and, and God has to come back and ask us, like God asked me on Wednesday morning prayer, haven't I done uh, so much for you that you cannot believe me? Haven't I made a way for you that you cannot even understand that when I tell you to do something or say something, that I am for you? And he asked the same question with Joshua. Haven't I not commanded thee to be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever thou shalt go. That is the word for our kings today. And then once we get it, we can dispel it in our house, in our, in our jobs. We can dispatch it. And then the angels come in and get in, and take and help us. So we're going to pray that today. We're going to come against um, the enemy that will keep the word out of our king's mouth. It doesn't matter how old they are or how young they are. The Bible says train a child up in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. And so, God, we thank you on today, oh God, for our kings. We thank you, oh God, for our young kings. God, we thank you for our older kings. We thank you for our, our men, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we even lift up those in our governmental system in the name of Jesus. God, we declare that they are strong and of good courage in the Lord. That they don't bite their tongue when it comes down to righteousness that they're full of joy, they're full of peace, and they're full of hope. God, I thank you, Lord God, because you have, not that you're going to, but because you have right now created in them that clean heart and renewed the right spirit, oh God, that the word of the Lord is going through out their mouth in the name of Jesus, just like a water faucet. God, they live and breathe and, and speak the word of God in season and out of season. I thank you, oh God, that they meditate on the word day and night. Oh God, that is a rehearsal in their being, oh God, that when they have a question, when they have a problem, when they have something that they don't have an answer to, they can go to the word that has been embedded in their spirit and you will bring it up. God, I pray, oh God, for our kings that have come 
have decided I'm going to take this new adventure. <clears throat> I'm going to take this leap of faith. I'm going to move into this direction that God has given me so that I can have an understanding of knowing who I am even more in the kingdom of God. So even as they begin to share their visions and share their hopes and dreams with help meets and mothers and aunties, we won't fall into a place of, of, of looking at them crazy. We won't fall in a place of saying, ooh, that don't sound right, that don't look right. But God, we will undergird them with prayer and undergird them with the wisdom of God and undergird them in the secret place of the Most High God and pray and push God's perfect will into forever in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, oh God, that you're coming against dream snatchers. In the name of Jesus. God, you're giving them, oh God, a gust of hope in the spirit. You're pushing them forth, oh God, to know that greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And God, as they go forth and meditate on the word, as they go forth and speak the word, God, as they go forth and do the things that you call them to do that you're making their way prosperous and they are having good success God I come against every demonic plan and plot against the entity that will cause them to have doubt and, 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 and cause them to have a mindset that they can't do it they can't think it they can't accomplish it God I thank you Lord God that you're putting oh God a fire under them that allow them to go forth oh God and set a blaze oh God every tactic that the enemy put against them in the name of Jesus. Because they have the helmet of salvation. They have the mind of Christ. And they walk, oh God, like the God said walk. They talk like God said talk. Oh God, they do things according to the will and the purpose of God. They are strong and mighty in the Lord. God, I thank you right now, oh God, that every battle that our kings is facing right now, oh God, that you're giving them strategies, oh God. And God, they can stand up in you and declare our and it shall be so. Oh God, I thank you right now, even in the spirit. God, I thank you that you're knocking down barriers in the spirit that would keep our kings from going forth, oh God. You're repairing breaches in the spirit. God, I thank you, oh God, that, that watchtowers, oh God, are being sentinel, oh God, to let the kings know to go forth in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you, oh God, that you're canceling off delays in the spirit for our kings, oh God, to go forth in the mission, oh God, in the assignment that you have on their life. You commanded them in Joshua 1 and 9 to be strong and courageous. And so we put that in the atmosphere that our kings, our young kings are strong and courageous in the Lord. God, even in the sports arena, oh God, as our king, little kings go forth in the name of Jesus, they may be playing basketball, a football, a baseball, and some of them may have no self-esteem because of bullying and different things that they have experienced in their childhood. But God, I decree right now in the name of Jesus that every word curse that has been spoken over our kings, even from a birth up until the age that they are now, it is null and void. It is utterly destroyed. We release the fire of God over them. They are strong. They are courageous. They are mighty men of valor. They are true to who they are. In the Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, I thank you for the boldness that they have. Oh God, that they can speak a thing and call it, as a, call it into existence in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that they are not weary in well-doing. But they understand that according to Joshua 1 and 8, <clears throat> that the law shall not depart out of their mouth. That they are meditating on the law of the Lord day and night. That they are observing to do all that is written in the book. That you are making their way prosperous and round that they through Messiah. And they are having good success. That they, they receive the word of the Lord and then they dispatch it to their wives and, and to their children in the name of Jesus. They don't doubt what you say. We cancel the spirit of unbelief 
and doubt and we lose truth into their mindsets right now. And because they walk, oh God, with the with the blessed prayer of righteousness on them, oh God, that their heart is covered, oh God. Every fiery dart, oh God, is being blocked by the shield of faith, oh God, Madre, in the name of Jesus, oh God. They walk with a confidence, oh God, knowing that they are the king, uh, uh, son, and that everything that they need and everything that they have is because of the King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They trust in you, O oh God. Some may trust in chariots. Some may trust in gold, but their trust is in the Lord. Their trust is in the things of the Lord. Their trust is in the word of the Lord. I thank you, O oh God, because they have on the belt of truth. They can go to the word of God and see truth. And speak it over their homes, speak it over their wives, speak it over their children, speak it over their jobs in the name of Jesus. Every blockage that will cause them from hearing the word of God, every blockage that will cause them from speaking the word of God, we command it to unstop in Jesus' name. We command victory to go forth in Jesus' name. We would command them to walk in unity of the Holy Spirit. That even though their flesh may be warring against the Spirit, God, that you're giving them a true, underdurated desire to obey you and obey your word. We thank you, oh God, that they know how to, 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 to declare, they know how to decree, they know how to lay hands on their spouses, they know how to lay hands on their children and to have an expectation that you come through and you come forth in the name of Jesus. And, I, and, and I'm just praying right now because what I'm feeling in the spirit that God is handing out new assignments and some of our kings are confused. Some of our kings are, are feeling a little bit of anxiety they're wondering if they should go forth. They don't have a. They don't have that 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 um, assurance. But what God is saying in this time and in this season that has helped me, we can push forth. That I might see. We have the power to push forth the assignment that God has for their lives, so that they can feel the strength of God. So they can know the strength of God. And I can tell, even for myself, what I have gone and, and learned to do. My husband would say something. And in the past, I used to be like, why do you want to do that? Well, where you get that idea from? God had to teach me to shut my mouth. He had to teach me what to say and how, excuse me, how to respond to my husband when he came up with an idea, when he came up with something God said. And even just recently, he's been sharing me some things, sharing some things with me, and I'm like, what? And God said, oh, well, he said, we need to go for it. And so God is letting me know that even in the midst of situations that I may not be comfortable with, God is giving the assignment to my husband. He's giving the direction to my, my spouse and giving it to him and he's giving it to me. And what God, what God is calling in the, in the land right now, he's reversing the roles for so long. Women have been going forth and we will continue to go forth. But what God is creating and bringing back is perfect alignment and perfect order in the home. And some of this have, have happened because single parenting, I was a single parent for a long time. Up until my children was um, about my youngest was 16. And so I had my own way of doing things. I had my own way of saying things. I had things set up like I wanted to do. But God said, this is not how I designed the family to be. And so what God is doing, he's reorchestrating. He's also being a demolition worker in the spirit. And he's tearing down old mindsets and ways of us doing things to make ourselves comfortable. And God is saying, you take off the pants. They don't belong to you. They belong to your spouse. You can always dictate and, and run things like you want to do it. They belong to your spouse. And even if he does do something or say something that is wrong, I am teaching him how to be a man and to learn from his mistakes. But he can learn if you always got your mouth on him in a wrong way, in a way that is not pleasing to me. Sanctified, like mom 
was saying last night. So sometimes our men, even our young men, I'm learning with my son, they don't, they can't be strong and create courageous because <clears throat> they have been word curses. They have been spoken over there. Oh, you can't do that. And God said, even deal with your 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 your, your quiet mind. Because sometimes we ain't saying stuff out of our mouth, but then we're saying in our mind. Hey, he must be. He, where he get that from? He must. Hey, that's a crazy idea. But don't you know when you speak over your king in a negative way, you speak it over yourself? Because the Bible said the two shall become one. And so this is why it is so important for us to watch the words that we speak out of our mouth. My husband has turned a corner since he turned 50, and I believe it was it was even happening before then, that God is causing him to say and do some things that I ain't even, even, even seen before. But I'm telling you, the consistency of speaking the word, the consistency of watching your words, the consistency of knowing who they are in God, the order of who God placed them to be. Many times I had to shut my mouth and my mind because I didn't think something was right. And then if my spouse came to me and asked me what I thought about it, I still had to be careful and, 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 put, in a, and put him in a place of letting him know, even though I may give my opinion, baby, you got the last and final say so, and I support you 100%. And for so long, we have had this mindset of Jezebel. Oh, I'm going to control everything. I'm going to make sure everything the way I want it to be. That's one of the reasons why God got me moving this and tearing down this and I can't do this and do that. He said, I'm taking it all out of your hands and I'm putting it in my hands and the hands of your king. You will no longer be in control. And it don't feel good. And every every year, a little layer of that comes off. A little layer. And it, I'm going to tell y'all what does feel good, knowing I can sit back and trust God that he got it. Knowing that I could sit back and, and look at my husband and say, ooh, that man of God is on point. He doing his thing. Knowing that I can sit back and pray for him even when he's struggling and let him know I still support him because my face is looking right or because my words are coming out. And in the word of God, it says that, that we can win our husband over without saying a word, without even looking a certain way. But by the conversation of how we are as women of God and how we do things and how we say things. So one of the ways of our husbands, our kings, even my son, he comes to me sometime, well, mom, what do you think about doing this? I, God is letting me know it starts now. It don't start when you get married. It starts now. Build up that courage. Build up that self-esteem. Build up that the courageousness and that strength in him now. Get him to speak over himself. But for, for a long time, my son Joseph, he walked around with a, uh, 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 the spirit of, of um, abandonment and feeling like he wasn't strong enough to do things. And it all was because of what I spoke while I was carrying him. And so I had to learn, I had to, to, to tear down the spirit of fear, I had to tear down the spirit of doubt, I had to tear down the spirit of, of unbelief and release self-assurance in God. Sometimes he come to me and say things, I'm like, ooh, that was God. And I see a little smile on his face and I'm like, I did the right thing. But then sometimes he come to me and he'll say something and I know I have to correct him. But then, and then he goes back and think about it. And pray about it. And he said, well, mom, I realized this. He's 10, y'all. And I thank God for another chance because even though I was a, a believer when I when I had my first oldest kids, because I was still dealing with fornication and lust and, 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 and trying to please my own flesh and my emotions, I didn't give the fullness of what I could have gave to my children. But I do have an understanding that the Bible says the seed of the righteous shall go free. And what I did impart in them that was good, God has the, the, the power to grow it. He has the power to tear down. Just like my parents had to pray for me to get free. I saw a lot of adultery in my, my mom and dad's life. I saw a lot of abuse. I experienced abuse. But God is the one. 
that can heal. God is the one that can deliver. God the one is that can break through. For a long time, I had low self-esteem because I was bullied. But the word of God says, have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? A lot of what we deal with coming from the kings and coming from even from ourselves is because of childhood hurts that we have not been healed from. But this is a season where I believe and I know that God is releasing unmeasurable healing for our men, unmeasurable healing for our women. And it all boils down to one thing that God said, and that's forgiveness. We got to forgive others and we got to forgive ourselves. And it has to be a daily walk. That doesn't mean it ain't going to be painful. That doesn't mean it's not going to be something that we're not going to think about. But every time I decide that I don't, I want to hold something against my husband or hold something against Somebody, I remember God had to forgive me for all the nasty stuff I did. All the stuff that wasn't lined up with his word. And so we see in Joshua 1, 8 and 9 that if we walk in the statutes of God, if we don't allow the, the word of God to lead, to, to say it, and we allow it to stay a part of our lives, and we allow it to meditate on, our, uh, meditate on it day and night, the Bible says, that he will make our way prosperous and we will have good success. And this success is unlimited. It's success in our marriage. It's success in our children. It's success in our finances. It's success in, 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 in your neighborhood. God said this is a time and season to think out of the box. Even when it comes down to your king, it doesn't matter what he was exposed to or not exposed to in his environment as a child. You have the jurisdiction and the authority to speak it into existence. He may not have had a father. He may not have had a mother. But God can be a mother and a father. And God can spend, send spiritual parents to impart in you the things that you are missing. Ask me how I know. So in this season, we have to take the filters off our eyes when it comes down to seeing things how God wants us to see them. The Bible says, greater work shall we do. But if we don't see things and hear things according to what God said we can do, then it won't happen. I love my husband. He is an awesome man of God. And I've seen him do things in the last three years. He doesn't have a church background like I do. But guess what? The prayers of the righteous, the prayers of a help me, godly wisdom and godly connections can do ten times more by the word of the Lord and by the spirit of God than anything that could have ever been done that I think he needed as a child. It's all about being plugged in. And so even last Friday, um, I, I prayed and decreed over young kings. And I told, I think I told you all, encourage a king today. I made it my purpose. When I went out after this line, every king I walked into that the Holy Spirit led me to, I was speaking over them. I was prophesying over them. I was telling them, you ain't got to wear your pants down. You a king, kid. You are a son of Jesus Christ. I was telling them about the word. I was giving them encouragement. Encouragement. And I was doing the same thing to my sons and to my spouses. We are living in the season of multiplication. That God wants to take the very words out of your mouth that is righteous and multiply it. But get this, the very words in your mouth that is not righteous, the enemy want to take a hold of it too. And that's one of the reasons why I believe that we in this season, and I don't know if this is for somebody else, but for me, God has been having me to be slow to speak and swift to hear. Hear what God is saying. And as it goes through my hearing, God, you dissect it. You, 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 you kind of give me understanding. Take my emotions out of it. Take all of the things that I think it should be and how it looks and what it needs to sound like. And you, when it, when it comes out of my mouth, if you lead it to, it's what you say, what you want to take place. 
what you want to, 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 to do. Because I'm telling you, I keep hearing, and young Ram Masun, young Ram Mama Masun, Rekita Da Andre. Whatever we're sowing in this season, excuse me, and the deliverance is taking place because I burp sometimes. God is bringing multiplication. God is magnifying it. God is growing it. Because there is a need for things to take place in the earth for the kingdom of God. And what God needs is going to happen. Whether he use you, whether he use me, whether he use our kings, whoever is willing and available to yield themselves to do what God says. And I'm going to tell you how I know it's happening because I've had so much opposition to getting my website up and running. I have had so much opposition to, to technology stuff like that's happening and, and keep breaking. I have had so much opposition to, to even my health. And when I say my health, I put myself on a challenge. To get some things done and, and line myself up in my body because I'm practicing eating vegan and exercising. And then I wake up and, and, and my shoulder, that shoulder that ain't hurt in years that I that I got in a bad accident when I was in my early 20s. All of a sudden, it's pain. You can't tell me the enemy don't want certain things to come forth. But I declare and decree we would not be stopped. We would not be stifled. We would not be slowed down. I thank you for detours in the Namazon Remasia. Detours in the spirit realm that will lead our kings, that will lead our help meets. The enemy may think he's put a roadblock, but what he's done is put us on a, a, a quicker trail to what God is doing in our life. So even right now, spiritually, God is reminding me that they're working on our neighborhood, they're putting down they're repairing the swords in our neighborhood, and what they're doing is they're preparing another road for us to go out. Oh God, I thank you that when they get to working on the road that we have, that we won't be stuck. So, God, I declare the decree, Lord God, that you're unstuck in our kings, our young kings, and our, our older kings, and even our mind, our, the mindset of the kings. God, that you're preparing preparing a detour, a road for us to go. And let me tell y'all something. This road that they're preparing in our neighborhood for us to go out is quicker. It's less turns. You can't tell me that ain't God. Because God, God talked to me in, in earthly parables. And he just brought that to my remembrance. Because I asked him, what are y'all, what are y'all doing? What, what, what are y'all doing? He said, Oh, we getting ready to, to, to clear out the sewage and put some in. So when you when 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 something is being repaired, sometimes it's painful because you got to take stuff apart and stuff has to be thrown away. So God has me in this purging and this pruning season where he's unlocking and gutting out some things, and just like he's doing it in the spirit, he's doing it in the natural and reminding me, yeah, there's so things can flow like it needs to flow out and things can flow in because I'm telling you if you stopped up with stuff in the natural of your saints ain't nothing flowing out but guess what ain't nothing going out either so when they're preparing this road this road that they got for us is going to be a quicker detour to me to get to the highway so I receive that for myself that if God is preparing, don't get hung up by the roadblocks of the enemy. You declare, God, I thank you for my spiritual detours in the spirit. Naturally and spiritually. So I got, when I get off this live, I got to do the same thing for myself. I got to do the same thing for my kids. I got to sit and think about, God, okay, what's being held up in the spirit? What's being held up? What's being held up? What roadblocks that has been coming to my king and been coming to the little kings and coming even to myself? And God, give me the spiritual detour that I need to speak over to knock this thing down and to go in a different direction. Because if you ever been on your way on the highway trying to get somewhere and an accident happened, and you put in your GPS and it tell you, detour, I got another route for
for you. And sometimes it be longer, and sometimes it don't. But God ain't never going to leave us without directions. God is never going to leave us without a place that we can go. God is never going to leave us without our answer. Sometimes we may have to sit there, but when I tell you when God speaks, he will speak. And even if you may have took a wrong turn, repent. Acknowledge that God, I was wrong. Acknowledge that God, I made a mistake. And ask God to give you the instructions again. His word, this right here, it don't change. It don't change. We may change. We might allow our, our emotions to get in place. But this right here, this word, it don't change. So sometimes because of our emotions, or because of our hastiness, or because of us not really being still and listening to the word of God, we can make mistakes in what God wants us to do. But all you got to do is say, God, I'm sorry. I repent. Even if you feel like your spouse made a mistake, we, you're one. God, give him the desire of God to, to say he's sorry and receive. Give him the instructions again. God, give it to me again so I can get it right. Because I'm telling you, that's part of being strong and courageous. When we pray over our men, we're not only praying things into existence for their life to line up with the word of God, but we're praying things in existence for their, their life to line up and those that all are connected to them. This is a domino effect, y'all. It ain't just about us. This is about each and every person connected to us. And that's why I'm so very careful then when I say something, either on live or even, even to people, I go back and apologize. If I was wrong, I made a, 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 a said something that was confusion because we have to stay humble in this walk. We have to acknowledge that, that God wants us to be real and true to ourselves so we can be true to people. Even be humble and submissive to your, your spouse. I have to humble myself even to my son. I'm the parent, but if he come to me and say, Mom, you... I think this was wrong. I got to be humble enough not to say, oh, I'm a parent. I do what I, I this is what I say. This is how I go. Oh, ooh, yeah, nah, nah, my son, baby, 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 she what you do when you do that, you close your child up from even wanting to talk to you about anything else. There's a time and a season for everything. And you have to know in the spirit and ask for discernment when you're giving an answer. Now, that was God. Now, I'm going to take that. Even when you're giving an answer, because some of us have grown up and, and that's one of the reasons. Oh, God, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's one of the reasons why some of our kings don't speak to us. Because even growing up, they was not given the permission to share their feelings without being stumped on. Oh, Jesus. Because every time they even presented an idea, or share something that they feel, it was pushed to the side. But God is helping us. He's bringing us into a place of revelation and understanding. He's getting us into a place of truth. He's giving us into a place where we can see clearly what God desires and wants in our house. And thank God that he's given us grace to get it all together. To get it all in line. Because I'm telling you, I've missed some deadlines with God. And I am pushing myself to get all that God wants me to do spiritually and all God wants me to do naturally. So I thank you all for joining me for Fighting Fights for the King. If you're led, like, and share this broadcast. Just a few announcements. I would love for you all to join me on February 20th at 6 o'clock on my page and also on Jennifer Jones' page. Um, she is, um, um, she's asking me to collaborate with her to talk about forgiveness and healing. I talk about this in my book. That is the first stage that I believe that any person has to go through. Forgiveness can block things that you want to, God to do in the natural. Yes, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and it can, it can block things that you want in the spirit, I know for a fact that forgiveness paved the way for me to be healed from cancer. And not from just cancer. I had to be delivered from some things in my flesh. 
I had to forgive myself. And I'm still going through because every, every time we grow in God, God repeals back layers and we see areas that we need to get right. Areas that we didn't deal with. I know when I first got saved and gave my life to Christ, the first thing the enemy dealt with me on was my daddy, my daddy issues. And I love my daddy. And I remember it like it was yesterday riding down the road. I had just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the devil came to me and said, mm, you remember when your dad um, used to hit on you or call you stupid? And ooh, Jesus. And that thing was like, what? And I was a baby in Christ, but I thank God for the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. The Lord immediately came in and said, don't listen to that. You forgive your daddy. And I remember calling my dad a couple of days later and telling him how much I loved him and forgave him. And I'm so glad I did that. So glad I did that. Because I'm telling you, them daddy issues, even the mama issues, the spirit of unforgiveness is like a cancer. Spiritually, it will eat away at your life. It will hold you up from receiving and it will hold you up from giving. Many people can't walk in the destiny of who God called them to be because they're holding on to things that happened or things that said. And what God is saying, let it go and heal. So I'll be talking about that on uh, February 20th. Also, I'm, uh, I will be doing a power series. My first, I've already done one. And if you haven't, um, if you are interested in the web purchase in the webinar, I did a power series on the power of tongues. Why we need to speak in tongues. What the tongues do. The different types of tongues. So if you're interested in person that, you can message me. Also on Friday, next Friday, I believe next Friday, the 29th, I will be doing a power of intercession. Registration will be free, so look out for that um, to come soon uh, for us a flyer and how you can register. And so I just want to be a blessing to God and somebody bless me. So I'm hearing God remind me. So I want to know. I'm getting ready to give away my book. Hold on. Someone bless me and um, sponsor books. So I'm getting ready to give away my book right now. Hold on. All right. Woo. So, this is my book. I'm not in remission. I'm healed. It's on Amazon. It's um, you can purchase it on Amazon. You can purchase it from me. It's also um, an ebook as well. But I'm trying to think. Who can tell me that does not have this book? If you, <laughs> unless you want to have it and give it to somebody, who can tell me? The first, whoever messaged me first or put it in the chat that could tell me my first prayer, how I came into praying for Friday Fights for the King, I will send you this book for free. So I just want to be a blessing. So from, from this week all the way probably into March, I'll be doing giveaways because that's how my ministry started. I was giving away gift cards. I was blessing people. Um, with books and different things and I, you know, God had told me I want you to, to do that. So I want to sow into someone's life. Um, also meet me on Jennifer's page because I'll be doing Jennifer, um, um, giveaways on that page as well on February the 20th and I've already posted a flyer so I would, be, would love it if you all would support it and share it. Also look out for my Facebook if you get a, a invitation from Restore My Treasures, that is me. I'm trying to move everything over to my Facebook business page, especially since my website is not working. And that would give people a little bit more information, direction, how they can get in touch with me for sessions, for books, for my healing oil, um, and for a lot of different things that God is doing. So the first person that messaged me and tell me my first prayer that I prayed for five to five for the king, and you know someone, even if you've ordered this book, you may know someone that need it. I just want to be a blessing. Somebody blessed me and bought five of these. And so I am giving them away. You don't have to worry about the shipping. Um, but I I believe in being a good steward and a good character over God's people. I do not play with people's money. 
When they do something and they bless, I do what God say do. So I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. I was not feeling well um, this morning, and I thank God for the prayers of the righteous that allowed me to push through because I was not going to miss God's assignment. So I'm getting ready to upload this on YouTube, Lord willing, and um, try to rest the rest of the day. So I love you all. I pray that you all have a good, mighty day. And so understand that God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about your king. And he loves you. And he has so much great things in store for you. Target, watch your words. Be slow to speak. Be swift to hear. Here, I think the Lord put on that. We got two ears and one mouth. So see you all later and have a good weekend. Blessings.